Ah yes, Australia. There are diverse landscapes, countless sites, and animals that can kill us in all imaginable ways. But joking aside, today we don't just want to focus our attention on the exotic fauna of Down Under. But instead, we want to take a close look at some amazing discoveries that show us which crazy secrets really lie dormant on the other side of the world. It's up to you to decide if you still want to travel to Australia after watching this video. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more great videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most disturbing discoveries ever from Australia. Magnetic Termite Mounds Nature is sometimes the better architect. Anyone who's ever wanted to know what structural masterpieces the creatures of our Earth are capable of should definitely travel to Litchfield National Park. On the extensive terrain, visitors can expect the sight of countless termite mounds, some of which are two meters high. The word magnetic can be traced back to the fact that the buildings actually function as perfect compass needles. Accordingly, the nests are always aligned in a meticulous north-south direction. However, it's still unclear why the creepy crawlies orient themselves so precisely to the poles of the Earth when building their structures. Some experiments show that the termites are somehow affected by the magnetic field. Since the tall, narrow structures face north-south, only the top of the termite mound is bathed in the direct light of the hot afternoon sun so that tens of thousands of residents never overheat. But the interior of the magnetic termite mounds is equally complex and impressive. So here we come across a multi-layered network of passages and chambers which create the perfect humidity and pleasant temperatures. Oldest Axe in History a small find with huge significance. Some time ago, researchers in northwestern Australia came across a tiny object that embodies the earliest known axe fragment ever. The age of the fingernail-sized splinter of basalt could be dated to an amazing 44 to 49,000 years. However, we mustn't confuse this discovery with the much older hand axes that have already been discovered in Europe and Africa. After all, these were completely different tools. According to the experts, the discovered fragment indicates the adaptation of the first Australians to their new environment. As a result, the Aborigines may not have developed their axes until they arrived down under. Despite this, the objects were not particularly widespread at the time. Thus, the axes were made only in the tropical north, suggesting that their manufacture was abandoned as humans spread into the desert and subtropical forests. Kakutia. It's 2014 when a skeleton was found near a riverbank in New South Wales. It quickly became clear that these were the mortal remains of an aborigine who passed away around 800 years ago. However, Kakutia, as the man was nicknamed, did not die naturally. In all likelihood, the aborigine succumbed to serious injuries sustained with a boomerang. The numerous furrows and broken pieces of bone leave no doubt that Kakutia was targeted by enemies. The skull is adorned with a notch about 15 centimeters long, which seems too long to come from traditional throwing clubs and axes. The researchers also discovered similarly serious injuries on the lower jaw, which of these ultimately led to the death of the aborigine is unclear. UFO Sighting on the Broome Police Department's Twitter account, we can admire a wide variety of photos. There are pictures of confiscated alcohol, stolen bicycles waiting to be returned to their owners, and shots of extraterrestrial spaceships. Yes, you heard that right. A while ago, the police channel published a strange video that was taken during a storm. And indeed, we can see a disc-shaped structure here that's strikingly reminiscent of a classic flying saucer. Although the police gave their comment, apparently we're not alone with a wink, many convinced ufologists believe 
believe that an extraterrestrial flying object was actually captured on picture here. The official explanation, on the other hand, sounds much less spectacular. Accordingly, we would simply be dealing with an ordinary lens reflection. Cooper For those who want to meet Cooper in person, we have bad news. You missed the meeting by almost 95 million years. There's no question that the sight of a prehistoric giant 30 meters long and 6 meters high would have been both terrifying and breathtaking. The bones of the mighty dinosaur were discovered purely by accident. Back in 2006, paleontologist Robin McKenzie and her husband were actually rounding up their livestock. Completely unexpectedly, however, the two came across the relics of Australia's largest animal. However, we should mention at this point that Down Under still belonged to the great continent of Gondwana during Cooper's lifetime. After the initial discovery, it was to take several more years before the bones could be reconstructed into a coherent overall picture. Cooper, or Australotitan Cooperensis, owes its name to its location near Cooper Creek. Horizontal Falls The Horizon Falls, or in other words, the waterfalls that aren't. Contrary to the official name, we're not dealing with ordinary waterfalls in this roaring natural spectacle, but with so-called equalizing currents. Located in Talbot Bay in the Kimberley region, the horizontal fall's flow direction is subject to the appropriate tidal phase. When the tide changes, huge masses of water force their way through the small, approximately 20-meter-wide straits at breakneck speed. Since the horizontal falls can easily be navigated by ships, they attract not only naturalists, but also countless tourists. Gimpy Gimpy For most people around the world, our native plants are nothing compared to what's springing up down under. The stinging hairs of the Gimpy Gimpy are full of moroidin, a poison that causes unbearable pain and extreme itching when touched. But that's not all. In some cases, the intense burning sensation can last for several months. Not even morphine can do anything for these torments. The stinging hairs can penetrate practically any clothing, whereby the plants do not even have to be touched directly in order to come into contact with the poison. The fine growths trickle down continuously from the gimpy gimpy. What still embodies the sheer horror of nature for us is not a significant danger for some animals in Australia. Not only are some creatures immune to the plant's toxin, some of them even eat the stinging nettles. The Marie Man when Bush pilot Track Smith flew over the Woolmere prohibited area in 1998, his gaze caught something almost unbelievable. A gigantic figure about 1.7 miles tall had taken up residence near Lake Eyre. Since nobody knows to this day who made the colossal earth drawing, the so-called Marie Man is still accompanied by the wildest theories. However, researchers generally assume that this is a modern geoglyph that was immortalized in the ground with the help of a tractor. So far, the Marie Man is the largest known Earth drawing in history. Its precision execution suggests that GPS was used to make it. But who took the trouble to create the gigantic work of art? In addition to artists, construction workers and even soldiers are discussed as possible authors. However, most believe that the character is the work of Bardius Goldberg. The Australian, who died in 2002, had already made a number of smaller images of the Earth. In addition, the artist received a very large sum of money at the time. However, he kept a cloak of silence about the background to the payment. What is still an exciting story for us is viewed much more critically by the Aborigines. Accordingly, the Marie Man was created in the tribal area of the Dieri, who feel that the drawing is a damage to their country. Firefly Tunnel in the early 20th century, a 400-meter-long railway tunnel was built near the town of Noons to accommodate the thriving mining industry. Nowadays, however, we no longer find any workers there. Instead, completely different inhabitants have spread here. Thousands of fireflies, which transformed the tunnel walls into a sparkling, starry tent. Those who went through the tunnel themselves were absolutely overwhelmed by the bluish, shimmering sea of lights. 
However, since the little animals are very sensitive to external influences, visitors are instructed to switch off their flashlights and quietly enjoy the unique impressions. Cone Snails don't let the fascinating appearance of the cone snails dazzle you. Although the shells of the tropical sea creatures shine in a wide variety of colors and patterns, we are by no means dealing with harmless reptiles. In fact, the approximately thousand subspecies of the cone snail are extremely poisonous. The so-called conotoxins can also be very dangerous for us humans, sometimes even deadly. There's a good reason why the neurotoxin is so effective. If the cone snail wants to kill a fish, it has to be dead on the spot. After all, the slow animals are not able to pursue their much faster prey. However, because the extremely venomous specimens are not native to shallow waters, only divers are at risk of encountering these cone snails. Unfortunately, there's currently no antidote that could declare war on the colorful mix of poisonous cocktails. Accordingly, victims can only be treated symptomatically. Thylacine whether it's the mighty saltwater crocodile, the highly venomous inland taipan, or the dreaded Sydney funnel web spider, Australia's biodiversity is as frightening as it is impressive. However, given the myriad of creatures that roam down under, we shouldn't forget that some animals disappeared from Australia over time, including the thylacine. The last living specimen of the largest predatory marsupials died in 1936. Since then, the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian Tasmanian tiger has been considered extinct. The animals, which are around 60 centimeters high and weigh 19 kilograms, presumably mainly hunted small kangaroos, possums, and rodents. The thylacine was once the largest marsupial to roam the earth, having lived around 4 million years ago up until the early 1900s. The last living thylacine was captured in 1933 near Tasmania, and the species has never been seen since. These animals were known for being shy and nocturnal, with an appearance like a dog. However, these animals also had characteristics of a kangaroo, as they had abdominal pouches and stiffened tails. The closest relative of a thylacine is believed to be a Tasmanian devil or a numbat. It's assumed that these animals died off after dogs took over their natural habitats and humans began to hunt them. The most interesting fact about these animals is that we have film footage of them from 1911, 1928, in 1933. This footage was filmed at various zoos before the animals died off completely. The thylacine certainly appears to have behaved very similarly to a dog, even though the two species are not related. Resurrecting the species has been posed by many scientists, considering that the Tasmanian devil is so genetically similar. However, no successful efforts have been made. Until the beginning of the 19th century, the thylacine was still widespread in Tasmania. However, after sheep were introduced to Australia, the predators soon gained a reputation as bloodthirsty beasts. Wrongly so, modern 3D simulations show that the thylacine's jaws were actually much too weak to tear down sheep. Sheep. The animals that died back then were probably due to feral dogs. However, since people knew nothing of these backgrounds, the thylacine was systematically hunted down and eventually exterminated. Attempts to save the species in zoos were unsuccessful. In all that time, there was only one litter in captivity. Nevertheless, isolated sightings of the thylacine are still reported today. However, these cannot be proven unequivocally. In March 2017, two separate sightings in northern Queensland made headlines, and who knows, maybe some of these fascinating animals actually managed to defy the merciless hunt of humans. Ball's Pyramid Officially, the rocky island of Ball's Pyramid is uninhabited. In 2001, however, researchers made an amazing discovery on the 560-meter-high massif in the middle of the sea, a tree lobster. At first, finding an insect doesn't seem particularly exciting. However, this changes abruptly when we consider that this species of stick insect was considered extinct until it was rediscovered. As early as 1920, the population of crawling animals had been reduced so dramatically that they were practically nowhere to be found. Incidentally, the island is the relic of an ancient volcano that formed 7 million years ago. Ryugo 
A few years ago, the Japanese space agency JAXA carried out a very challenging project. As part of the Hayabusa 2 mission, an unmanned space probe was sent to the asteroid Ryugu. After the cosmic missile had been examined and photographed in detail, the unmanned spacecraft took some soil samples from the astronomical small body, which were then to be brought to Earth. The corresponding capsule finally landed at the airspace test site in southern Australia. By examining the 4.6 billion year old material, scientists hope to glean important insights into the early days of the solar system and the origins of life. And indeed, over 10 different types of amino acids have been detected in the galactic rock. Ok folks, now we need your opinion. Which discovery would you like to marvel at up close? Or have you ever visited places like the Glowworm Tunnel or the Horizontal Falls yourself? Share your thoughts and experiences with us and the community. Please show us by subscribing and liking that you enjoyed our trip down under and that you don't want to come into contact with the Gimpy Gimpy. And with that, thanks for watching, take care and see you next time.